Neil, let's start with with a bit of injury news. Is there any and any problems from the weekend? Uh, yeah, Alex Lacey came off. Um, felt a little bit tight in his hamstrings at half time, and then sort of five ten minutes into the second half, didn't feel quite comfortable enough to carry on. So we're not we, we're not at the moment. We don't feel it's something serious, but I think it's something that um, might not turn itself around in time for tomorrow. You'll be sick to death of the Cara Roberts question, but it's still ongoing. Any closer for him? Could, could we see him back soon? Well, he's back out on the grass now. So he's, um, like we said before, you know, with with uh, the potential of long COVID, there is a lot of uh, data now that's being used by a lot of uh, people that have done studies on it now that um, a lot of players are getting muscle injuries who have recovered from, from COVID. I don't know if you've looked up and down the all the leagues and seen how many injuries there are. I think that, you know, a lot of players have obviously had the virus and and it is it cows possibly one of them that's picked up two or three little niggling muscle injuries in his in his work to get back. But he's back out on the grass now. But obviously when you have them little niggles every time you, you tend to just take things that touch slower. But we'll try and build his base up, build him up and if we don't have any steps backwards, then then you know you never know. Maybe in the next few weeks we might get to to see him back in there. But that's not me promising, by the way. <laughs> but it would be a very difficult thing for you and the physio team to manage, really, because long COVID is very unknown. People are still learning more about it every day. So just really managing the situation must be quite unique. Yeah, I think if you look up and down the leagues, I mean, Yeovil only had four subs the other day against us. I think the you know, and I've argued for more than five subs in our league for various reasons, but um, I do think that a lot of clubs have struggled with the the amount of games they've had to play and and uh, you know the, the the sort of COVID scenario, um, and I think that probably has as um, you know led to pro- possibly more injuries throughout the leagues. I don't know if there's data on it. I'm sure somebody's collecting them, but. Yeah, it's difficult because you push too soon, you know, too much too soon. You break down again, you go too slow, you never know. So um, we'll, we'll try and get it right. And like I said before, it would be, you know, if we had Cal back fully, fully fit for, you know, 12 or 15 games rather than try and rush him back three games earlier, that would be, you know, my, my preference. So great to hear you back on the grass. And the way you're talking there, you're talking about games in the future. So there's no worry at the back of your mind that you might not see him again this season. You think that there's every chance he will get back on the pitch. I've got to keep that that hope alive, haven't I? You know, you um, like I said before when we talked about goals and situations. You know, obviously we talked about not having Wes Thomas, and although we knew we wasn't going to have Christian Dennis because he'd signed elsewhere, um, we didn't expect not to have Cow and Wes Thomas for you know, virtually all, all the games, bar maybe three, uh, up till now. So it has hit us hard and, and the quicker we're getting back, the more the more uh, firepower we'll have in the squad. Are people been going out for goals from different areas and, and that happened on Saturday. How happy were with you, what you saw with, you know, just the, the, the different ways you scored and, and so on? Yeah, it was two great goals and... It, as a manager, you just got to look at did we did we carry a threat? Did we have other chances? Did we look like we we had more goals in us? And I felt like we did, so that was pleasing. It wasn't just like them two strikes were the only time we ever got near the goal. Um, that's more worrying. Um, so so yeah, I was really pleased, and I thought you know overall in the balance of things we had the, the main chances. You know even from set plays and stuff. So. Um, Obviously, every game is going to be different now, and Tuesday will be completely different, I'm sure. But but it's it was a promising sign. Very unusual to have a situation like this, apart from I guess a two legged cup game. Does it affect your preparations? Do you change anything, or, or will you straight back on the training pitch in the same frame as mine? You say it's unusual. I played for Wimbledon uh, years and years ago, and we played Spurs five times in a month. Uh, we had them in the semi-final of the um, the League Cup. We had them in the FA Cup, which went to a replay, and we had them in the league. And the worst part about that was, I was down the right hand side, and down the left for them was David Ginola. So didn't get any easier throughout them five games. <laughs> I can assure you. Um, it is strange. It's a strange year, you know. When we're trying to rearrange these fixtures that have, you know, we we've lost. It's tough, you know. There's no ideal. Oh well, if we put it there, we can get a couple of home games and then an away game, and that you you, you know you're just fighting to find any midweek at the moment. So when we knew we had Yeovil, it wasn't ideal twice, but but it's part and parcel the same as we're going to have possibly five games out of seven away from home soon. 
Is it advantage you because you won on Saturday, or is that just nonsense, really? Nonsense. Um, they're at home now. Their patch. I said before, really tough place to go, Yeovil. Always has been for me personally as a manager and a player. So, um, you know, might make them even more determined to turn the tables. Um, yeah, every game's different. Team takes the lead and gives themselves a boost and, and it's hard to chase games. So we've got to put in an even better performance. You dropped it in there. Charlie Slater said to mention this. He says you never win at Yeovil and you've obviously just admitted it, it there. Is it that bad? Uh, well, I won there last year in the cup with nine men. So I'd like to okay. bring that one He's out there. So Charlie's going to see, he should get his facts right. I'd, I'd have a word with him about that. Yeovil's a very tough place to go. Even when I was with Wimbledon, it was a tough place to go, even as a player. Um, you know, and I think their home record's a lot stronger than their away record. So there's so many things in there. We're going to have to put in a really, really, you know, good performance all round, um, you know, and try and make it a really strong week, obviously with the cup semi-final at the end of the week. Uh, if we can if we can get a result tomorrow or take us into that, you know, and, and, and try and get to Wembley, it would be, you know, it's a good week in the making, hopefully. Yeah, how big a week do you feel it is? Because if you can get another win, suddenly, I'm not going to say there was uh, pessimism, but one or two people are maybe just getting worried and looking over their shoulder. That's probably more people outside the club and inside the club, but get a result Tuesday, get to a, to a cup final, it won't be a bad week at all, will it? If we get it right, yeah, absolutely. If, if we can get to the end of the week and we've you know, kept chipping away at the points total we need to try and get to in the league and, and we got to Wembley and it's a great week and then we've got to start all over again with the next batch of games. Um, it's funny because I look up on my board, I do uh, three thirds of the season almost and the, the first amount, 15 games I could fit in on my board uh, at the start of the season and the, the record for the second 15 that we've just come up to now, just finished now, is almost identical, literally to the to the wins ratio, the goals scored, the goals against, it's it's fascinating. So we've been consistent, if anything. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wurzel here. Um, <laughs> uh, just on the performance at the, at the weekend, how, how pleased were you with it overall now that you've had to have a look at it back? Yeah, really pleased. We I thought we was really strong and solid at Wildstone. Um, and, you know, I think there was only going to be one sort of team that won that game. I thought we was all over the shop midweek at Boreham Wood and showed real grit to try and claw it back. Um, and I thought on Saturday we was really professional. Um, you know, to obviously two great goals, but I thought the to limit sort of them and the, the sort of players they've got that can score because they can score goals, to limit them to very little and to be solid and to carry a threat, I thought all parts of our game were, were fairly good. So if we can do a little bit more of that on Tuesday, we give ourselves a, a reasonable chance. How crucial is the experience players been? Because it looks like you've obviously you've invested a lot in experience in the last couple of games. You know, your O'Briens have come in, uh, Jake Reeves has come in. You've gone for experience at time with, with Effie Young and, uh, and things like that. Um, yeah, I just think it suits. You know, we want to earn the right to play. We we felt that we hadn't in them few games earned the right to play when we 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 lost our sort of form a little bit, and we got to get our own mojo and confidence back. And only results are going to do that. So yeah, we've you know we have gone a little bit more solid and and less expansive, whatever the word you want to look at. Um, but that's not to say that that's the the way forward for for the remaining twenty games or whatever it is. It's just. Sometimes, you know, as a group, you come together and find a way to manage through. And at the moment, them players have done very, very well, but but the, the others are chomping at the bit as well. What was the mood like today in training after after such a good win at the weekend? Yeah, it's good. It's uh, Like I've always said before, there's only so much you can do as a manager. You, you take them to that white line, they go and get a win and... The wins in itself can can lift their mood, and you know, a million times more than I can by going around trying to boost their confidence. And uh, hopefully, they can keep it going. That's the that's the aim now is to keep chipping away because you know the majority of the teams at the top are relentless at the moment in their performances. And obviously, we've talked a bit before about no relegation and whether that's going to affect the integrity. It you know I hope it doesn't, but at the moment, certainly the teams at the top are, are pretty relentless. And have you got any fresh injury worries uh, for the weekend? Uh, Alex, Lace, tomorrow, actually. yeah, Alex had to come off, obviously. Um, so he's he's one we just get a look at. Um, other than that, the majority of them are okay. But you know, like I've said before, 
Alex is probably a result of Saturday, Tuesday for four or five weeks and people think, you know, if you leave one or two out, they go, why has he left him out and stuff like that? And I have to or I'm going to break him and I'd rather lose, you know, a player for a game to freshen him up than lose him for four or five weeks. I'm sure you've been asked this question, I'm sure you got asked this question at the weekend, but what's the latest with Lewis Knight? Yeah, um, so again, we, we're in touch with the, the sports science team and the data and we've had long conversations about him. Um, it's really difficult because training, there's not a lot of training going on. You're just trying to get bodies back, uh, you know, literally Saturday, Tuesday now. You you don't get that full week of training. So it's fitting intensity in when he does train and making sure we top him up. But I think he'll come a point where he's not eligible for Saturday's game. Mm. So I think if we have a really good, strong week with him, I think there'll come a point when we've taken him as far as we can. And then it's down to him to say... I'm doing better than somebody else who's in the 16, uh, you know, when you look at me and, and throw me in. Have you seen flashes of what it's like in training and, and sort of as it made you look a bit excited? What, what, what would yeah, you... I, I think we've got to be careful not to think that, you know, we with what we did with Cal Roberts last year was pretty remarkable and credit to the, to the scouts and the team for pulling that one off. Cal's a technically superb player who, who we all know could play at a higher level you know by by looking at him Lewis is different to that he's he's um, he's more about his pace and his movement and he's running in behind so we've got to make sure that he's ready to play at the level physically and tactically um, and he's ready to you know whether it's 20 minutes at first to show us bits and bobs of what he can do he's, he's not Cal Roberts he's a different player Mm. Is he? I mean, I think Conor Rawlings described him as very fast uh, last week. You have got some quick players in the squad. Just how quick is he? I, I haven't seen him in a race with any of them yet. We're not really doing sprinting in between games while we're trying to recover, so I haven't really seen him in a race. But I would, I, I would have thought over over twenty thirty yards, it would be a, uh, you know, he would he would be right up there amongst the the probably three or four best ones. Brilliant. Thank you. Hi Neil, how are you? Good, thank you. Good stuff. Uh, just a few follow-ups from me. Um, so, sorry if this uh, first one was already mentioned. I was uh, a couple late in, but um, seven points from nine now. Do you sense that the tide's shifting in your favour a little bit? No, it's a start. Um, I, I'm not going to get excited after three games um, with the way that when you look at teams like Sutton and Artlepool at the moment, they're consistently Wrexham. They're consistently going on a strong, unbeaten, and winning run. Um, I don't think three games is going to cut it at the moment with where we are. I think we need to to try and do it over, you know, a period of uh, uh, sort of ten games and and try and get an unbeaten run going, or at least get six, seven wins out of them ten games to to make sure that we're we're where we need to be. And, and of course, you mentioned that um, Alex Lacey had to um, to come off in the game at the weekend. And without this, meaning to sound like an incredibly obvious question, but. With the amount of injuries that you've had to contend with this season, just how frustrating has it been and how have you had to deal with that as manager? Um, I think you have to deal with it. You have to just sort of roll with it and work out the next uh, line of attack, so to speak. It's frustrating. It's just as frustrating as having the games cancelled that we have had. That have, you know, we, We've ended up losing five, six games probably that weren't our fault. Not our fault, but, but weren't down to us. And, uh, you know, it was down to the opposition. And I think that... Um, you know that's put us in a position now where it's relentless. And like I said, if we can go through till the end of the season now, um, and find a way of staying consistent during a brutal schedule, then then it will be a fantastic achievement. And uh, I have to roll with that and find ways of putting teams on the pitch that can perform at a higher level. What's the key to staying consistent when the games are coming so thick and fast? Um, I suppose it's uh, if you know if you, you if you can't keep a high level of performance. Um, where you where everything's going your way and your, your quality on the ball is fantastic and stuff like that, I think you've got to make sure you're digging in and you're dogged and you can play average or okay and still pick up a result. I think that you know in any league the team that wins the league, you know if it's Sutton United that go on and win the league if if they're at the top now you know the manager will probably come in and say well yeah we played great in ten of them. But there was another 12 or 15 that we dug in and picked up a result, and that's some, that's what it needs to win a league or get promotion. Yeah, like you say, it's those kind of like them battling one nils when you're not at the best to just get yeah. the results and, um, and fly the table. Yeah.
Absolutely. And, and in terms of the, the game tomorrow, how, how will it be different to the game that you played at the weekend against the same team? Um, long, lot longer travelling for us. That's one difference. I know um, every game's different. Uh, you know, even if both teams played the same shape um, and played the same team, it would be a different game. Conditions, whatnot. Um, one team gets a good start, nicks a goal. Anything can change a game of football. No two games are ever the same. So we won't go in there believing that that's it. You know, we're going to win. We'll go in there expecting them to come out and and hit us harder than they did on Saturday. And and we've got to be ready for it. And, and you mentioned a few moments ago that Yeovil is a tricky place to go. Their home form is on, typically a lot better than their away form. What is it that makes it such a difficult place to go? I don't know. It's a really interesting one. Um, it's just somewhere that's all, always gone and the tempo of the game is really, really fast. So you've got to be up for that. It's not. It's never a slow game. It's never one which is tactical. It's, it's cut and thrust. And I think sometimes they get on top of teams at home and we've got to be ready for that and make sure that doesn't happen. And just finally for me, of course, speaking hypothetically, but what would it do for the team to, um, to uh, pick up a win midweek? Massive just keeps us, you know, in a really strong place. We, you know, it might might make the boys start to believe we're back in the running again, and you know, looking up rather than looking behind you, and uh, and it takes us into a cup semi final in a good place. So that's the aim this week is to is to pick up a good result tomorrow and um, try and make sure we get to Wembley on Saturday, and and then obviously we go into another sort of brutal schedule over the Easter period. Just, just to pick up on that, sorry, were some of the players starting to look over the shoulders a little bit? The teams catching them up, or no? I don't think so. I think it was frustration more than anything in our performances. I think, you know, the players sometimes you play really, really well, and you know that you did a lot right, but you was unfortunate they got one chance and scored. We've had loads of them games, and you, they're easier to swallow because you know you're on the right track. I think it was the fact that we just lost our way a little bit in certain parts of our game that, that got everyone down. And I don't think anyone was really kind of looking down, oh, if we're not careful, we're going to be mid-table. I think we were just looking down, right, what have we got to do to get back on track? Cool, Yeah, that's all for me. Thank you so much, Neil. Thanks very much.